Good morning, church. Good to see everyone this morning. Uh, a couple of announcements that I have today is the uh, town hall meeting with the bishop in uh, Mount Pleasant, not Washington. I said Washington to somebody this morning, and they said, no, it's Mount Pleasant. 
Um, and we will be leaving here at 1 o'clock, no later than 1 o'clock. So if you are interested in going, let me know so that we'll make sure that you have the ride or we can carpool together. So that's from 2 to 4. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll get a, a good group going there. Are there other announcements that need to be made? I know Mary's got one and Jay's got one. And Barb's got one. Wherever you want to go. Go to Jay. He's closest. And Carol. Go ahead, Jay. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is just to let you know that today's special music is a bit longer than the special music sometimes is. So we hope you'll sit back and relax. And uh, there will be a little reading on the screen. And you can let the winds of the Spirit wash over you as we play a piece called Windscape. Perfect piece for Pentecost. Mary's got one behind you. Just wanted to let you know that uh, several people have signed up to help with coffee while we're out of town, but we still need a little more help on June 26th, I believe, on that Sunday. So uh, everyone would certainly appreciate coffee on June 26th. Thank you. Melanie, what do you got for us today? Thank you, Tony. Don't in the fourth week. I'm going to go to a trip to go to the end of a hot air balloon. Ah, you get to go see the hot air balloon. Yes, we hope we're having a good day back there. Let's hope it's good weather. Barb? Next Monday, May 27th, is M Memorial Day, and we will not be making maps on that day. I assume the office will be closed. I think so. Yeah, so no map making on Memorial Day. All right. Are there any other announcements? Ah, Cindy's got one clear over here. See, Cindy's got one. Carolyn, you've got one too, don't you? I'm thinking this morning about glory sightings, and I'm wondering where you have seen God at work in your life. Um, we are um, encouraging everyone at St. Mark's to keep track of their glory sightings and be thinking about how is God working in your life and the lives of others around you. Um, we will have um, some index cards. Um, they're pastel colored, and they are um, going to be out by the bulletin board at the welcome area. And you can uh, write your, you can take one home with you to write something down and bring it back. And we want to post those um, on the bulletin board so others can see how God is at work um, in your life. I have a glory sighting I want to share this week or that happened just a couple weeks ago, actually, um, was on Cinco de Mayo. Um, many of you remember um, Emma Nugent, who we lost way too soon a few years ago. She, uh, they, it would have been her 21st birthday on Cinco de Mayo. And so that we had a little, um, a little gathering uh, to celebrate her birthday. And so it turned out there were 21 people who showed up at the party, and we released 21 um, lights, uh, lanterns, up into the air, and it was quite spectacular. The sun was going down, and you could see those lanterns to celebrate her. Um, so that's a great exciting I to share this morning, and I hope you're thinking about other people on this day. Carolyn, you have one. Yesterday, when we were working out, my instructor um, came in just frantic. She's going to be married in October, but her father in law had had cancer, and she thought it was in remission. Well, she got word yesterday that it came back with a vengeance, and there's some kind of trial. They're doing it for my, I'm not sure, but um, I just pray for her father in law. I'm not going to give any names up, but she was just, she just ran it because she had to go back to Des Moines and trying to keep her job here and stuff. So it's really hard for her. Okay, thank you. Corey, are you doing it down there or up here? Three weeks or so to the barbecue. Sign up out there. There's still a lot of ones on them. You should also be uh, needing more tickets. I'm sure everybody's sold out of everyone's they picked up already. So, more tickets out there. 
also, Steve Laughlin decided that he's run the pit for years, has decided to kind of up the game for a year. So the amount of chicken we plant to cook is going to leave about uh, two racks being cooked on a third run. And he decided that that's not good enough. So he's taken it upon himself to contact the table, the table and everything, and they're willing to take extra hunting quarters that we cook. Right? Okay. So if we do an extra six racks of hind quarters, it'd be about $33 a rack, which Ivy is selling us the hind quarters super cheap. So if anybody wants to sponsor an additional rack for hind quarters of the six, it'd be $33, and it's all going into the table to table. So not only will be fulfilling you know, raising the money for the church, but also helping those in need that can't afford a good St. Mark's chicken dinner. So hook me up or hit me up or uh, see Lachlan if you would like to sponsor a rack. Thank you. Think and be. I like that idea. Anyone else? Brenda's got one. Okay, we could really use some extra hands for Christmas. I know it's only May and getting into June, and you're like, that's way too far away. However, there is a lot of work involved in this, and so. And we do try. We do try to have a good time while we're doing it, and just admire each other's work. So, um, please, please feel free to join us Saturday, one o'clock. Um, we're here from one to about three thirty for sure, depending on. There's only two of us. I'm sorry, three thirty. We get start to peter out. We need the extra people to kind of give us the oops to keep going. So, one o'clock. Here Saturday, decorating, cutting, whatever you need, whatever you would like to try and do. Okay, wonderful. Did I miss anybody? All right, I invite you now to stand and turn to the person next to you and say, May the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you now to join with me in our call to worship, and it is actually uh, a prayer, and we are going to read it together. So will you join with me? God of grace, you sent the promised gift of the Holy Spirit upon the apostles and the women, upon Mary, the mother of Jesus, and upon your brother. Fill your church with power. Kindle flaming hearts within us and cause us to proclaim your mighty work in every time that all may call on you and be saved through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I do invite you now, if you are able, to stand and join with us in our call to worship. Sorry, our opening song. I knew what it was. Um, the pictures you're going to see on the screen periodically throughout the worship service come from our campfire that we had in joining our guest committee prayer. So I invite you to stand if you are able and join with us in prayer.
I'd like the kids to come up. And they're going to come up here this morning. For those of you who are wondering, you know, I normally don't sit down. I threw my back out this week. So, we'll do things a little differently today. You can come on up here. So, I'm going to have Deanna. She'll give one of those to all the kids. When you guys came in this morning, you, re- you received this little card that had the cross and flame on it, right? If you did not get one of those, raise your hand and the ushers will make sure you have them. So, all you have to do is give them to everybody up here if they don't have them. Yes, did you get one? Okay. All right. I'll take the ushers. Thank you. All right. So, you know what we have here? And don't say a cross and flame. Or a piece of paper. Uh, thank you there, Marcus. So, can you find something that looks like this in our sanctuary? Where is it, Nevaeh? Right up there. This is, if you don't know, this is the United Methodist symbol, right? When you see this sign, and you can see this sign literally all over the world. So, are you going to Italy? Look for it. And report back, okay? All right. So, but there's something very special about today and this symbol. So, today is Pentecost. Pentecost simply means it's the day when the Holy Spirit comes and fire, using fire, touches each of the disciples. Okay? I also asked everybody who could to wear red today. You know why? Red represents fire. You're right. He could have read the yellow or orange as well, so that's all good, right? Now, this symbol is very special because it doesn't just have one flame. It has how many flames? Two flames. Why does our cross have two flames? Any ideas? Any idea? No? So, a long time ago, and I'm going to say a long time ago because it was, I was four years old when it happened. We had two denominations. We had a Methodist group, and we had an Evangelical United Brethren Church that decided to merge together. And when those two denominations merged together, you know what they created? You're sitting in one today. A church, a Methodist church, a, but there's something else with that. There's another word that goes with that. A United Methodist Church. There you go. So this, this is why it represents the United Methodist Church, because each of those flames represents a denomination and makes us united Methodists. Now, what does this have to do with the Holy Spirit? I'm so glad you asked. So, this cross and flame is what I want you to carry with you. And in the sermon today, we're going to find out more about what the Holy Spirit is. But this is your Holy Spirit that you get to carry with you, okay? And I want pictures of where you take this Holy Spirit. If you are out gardening, take a picture. Send it to me. If you're out mowing the yard, if you're on vacation, this is our reminder that the Holy Spirit is with us. And we're going to, I invite you to carry this Holy Spirit with you and just see where the Holy Spirit leads us. Just see what happens when you are intentional about bringing the Holy Spirit with you wherever you go. All right? Think we can do that? Pictures and stories are what we need. I want to know where you've taken the Holy Spirit. So, Nevaeh, when you go on vacation, whether you're playing outside, I want a picture of you with that Holy Spirit in your hand. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, today we truly celebrate the power of your Holy Spirit in this place. It's 
spirit that is making us come alive. We just know that we thank you for each day. As it touches each of our hearts, help us to remember that you are always with us, walking with us in the same. This is our prayer. We pray it in the name of God, all God's people. And all God's people said, Oh, that was easy. I think we need to try that again. And all God's people said, yes. All right. Much better. Thank you for coming out. Uh oh. <laughs> At this time, our bells have a very special number for us. As Jay said, there's something up on the screen that you can read. And if you just want to sit and close your eyes and just feel that Holy Spirit flow over you, that's a good thing too.
hopefully you felt the Holy Spirit. This is the time in our worship service in which we uh, share in our offering, uh, and this is another opportunity for us to spend some time in prayer with God. So let us receive our morning offering. Most gracious and holy Lord, today, once again, we come to this place we call a sanctuary to breathe in your Holy Spirit, and as it stirs within us, that we answer your call. Today, Lord, we lay at your feet our everything. To follow in you wherever you call us to go. To touch the lives of people all around us, introducing them to you. Grand ways and simple ways. Gracious Lord, all we ask is your blessing to be upon these gifts as we go out into the world to share your good news and lives be touched by your Holy Spirit. This we pray in the name of your Son Jesus. And all God's people said, Yes. Get better with those yeses. You may have a seat. This is uh, time for our pastoral prayer. Um, we have some that are still uh, discerning jobs and where they're going to be headed next, uh, as well. So there's transitions that are being made. Um, so those are yes, the prayer requests this morning. Let us be in the attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy Lord, today we come to you and take that deep breath, breathing in your holiness, letting go of struggles and hurts and pains and unknowns, breathing in your goodness, and breathing out. Joyous and sad. Gracious Lord, we come experiencing your Holy Spirit, knowing that you will be walking alongside us. 
do know, Lord, that there are so many things that are happening within our world where your presence of your Holy Spirit and its refining fires can bring peace and healing and wholeness. Today, we lift up to you our own hearts, and we prepare for the message that you have ready for us to receive. Help us to find that Holy Spirit deep within us. We open ourselves more to you, and you help us stay deeper in our faith and our trust of you. Our holy God, today is a day of celebration, a day of a brand new start, a day of a life with you. With your Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of your Son Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. At this time, I invite you to stand and join with us in our uh, hymn of preparation, Wind Who Makes All Wind Get Lost.
19:21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the voice of a violent wind, and filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devoted Jews in every nation that had been living in Jerusalem. And at this sound of crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking the Galilean? And how is it they hear each of us in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. Caridia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya, belonging to Syria, and visitors from Rome were Jews and Catholics, Cretans and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking by God's grace and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others here said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Know this is what is spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your monks, young men shall see visions, and old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show potents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoke, smoke and mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. And thank you, Carolyn, for all those towns, countries. Uh, you did a great job with that. Sometimes I omit those, but I keep this one. She did a great job. Thank you. Today is Pentecost. Pentecost is when we think of fire. Fire has three elements that is a necessity for a fire to be a fire, right? What are the three things that we need? Fuel, oxygen, something to start it. Right? So it needs air or oxygen. It needs some kind of matter or fuel that will burn, and then it needs something to ignite. Right? Now, fires can come in very different forms, and I love the music that you had for today, Jay, with the bells, because it fits perfectly with the sermon. Because in that music, what you heard, or what I heard anyway, was that push of sound and then the soft, gentle notes. That follows. Fires can think of a campfire that we had Tuesday night. You know, we did a Gethsemane prayer. It was just mesmerizing to sit there, watch this fire that was contained, the flames that were burning, and it was just healing, right? Nothing better than a campfire. Well, if you've been watching the news, though, you notice there's more to a fire. And a contained fire that's gentle and soft. Canada is facing raging wildfires. Smoke is finally starting to get down here into Iowa. We've been noticing it in our air quality. Fires can be raging. Suddenly they can be out of control. And if you are a firefighter or a family member of a firefighter, those are not the kind of fires that are loved. Those are the fires that are hated. Because how do you get them under control without 
harm. People's houses burn. Lives sometimes are lost. Right? So fire is one of those things that's very dangerous, but yet it's very healing as well. When I think of a fire with the Holy Spirit, I think of the same thing. Most of the time, the Holy Spirit comes in this nice, gentle way, and there's this nudge that tells us, here's what you're supposed to do, and we can listen to it or we can not. You know, it, it, it makes us feel like we've found some peace within us. You know, that's what the Holy Spirit does. But according to Luke, the Holy Spirit that comes on the day of Pentecost comes as a raging fire. It's the wind, the sound of a wind, of a raging fire. You know, it's one of those that you're sitting, the disciples are sitting in this town of Jerusalem waiting for the Holy Spirit to arrive, and then all of a sudden it is this whoosh of a sound, kind of like what we would think of as a tornado or hurricane wind. The sound of that. And then there's tongues of fire touching each of the disciples. And it's a refining fire that changes everything it touches. Now, you're in Jerusalem. What does that look like to you? What would you do if you had been there with the disciples? Would you hide? Would it feel like Hilton magic? We've got our age kid here. You bet. Hilton magic. Would it feel like that exciting game when Caitlin Clark makes the final basket that breaks another record? That shakes the whole building? You've experienced that, right? Most of you. You know that level of excitement, that level of joy, right? Can you feel that with the Holy Spirit? That's the way it was with the disciples. It was that loud, that exciting. They finally have this gift, but it was life altering as well. And it made, suddenly made these disciples and all the people that were there fire filled people. You know what that means? Fire filled people. My definition for that is people who are on fire for God. Like people who are on fire for ISU when they win. And Iowa. Gotta give credit to Iowa, but my heart's still with ISU. But you're on fire. There's a passion, there's an excitement that we are ready to go out and do. Now, According to Luke, the, the crowds that had gathered around as the disciples were touched by these tongues and, and were, were speaking to, to all of the people and however they responded, the crowds around them thought they were drunk because they changed them so much. They were so excited they weren't behaving in the natural way. But Peter very quickly changes their mind and he says, we're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We don't drink at nine o'clock in the morning, and you know they're good. Christ- they're good people, followers of Christ. That you know they obey those laws, and even though they drink alcohol, it's not to that that point of you know it's embarrassing to be drunk. It's not what they do. So they shared with them good news, and Peter comes right in and says, "No, we are not drunk. <laughs> this is the power of the Holy Spirit." And starts sharing with them the good news. Now I think about and ask the question of myself: What does it look like to be fire-filled people today? By the way, did you know you are filled with the fire of the Holy Spirit? Think of where you were ten months ago. Now, if you don't remember ten months ago, ten months ago was right before I came. We were in transition. Your attendance is before I came, so think of the number of people that you would see on worship on Sunday morning. 
Think of the mood or the atmosphere. Think of what pulled you to come to worship or not come to worship. Now, take a look at it. What's it like today? Are you excited by coming to worship today? Are you excited about being part of St. Mark and where we're going? One of the things that uh, um, Focus Forward Church Council, don't forget your assignment, Church Council, we're trying to find out why does St. Mark exist? What is that Holy Spirit telling us or calling us to do as a St. Mark community? Why do we exist? When we figure that out, we're going to know what our mission statement is. And then we're going to start exploring and looking for what our vision is. Now, I want to share with you, most of us, when we think about the conference, when we think about the conference mission statement, what is it? Anybody know? Sure you do. Making disciples for the transformation of the world, right? Making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Actually, there's more to it. The mission statement. Well, let me back up. The vision statement. Here is the vision of our conference. It's to see God's hope for the world made real through faithful leaders, fruitful communities, and fire-filled people. Let me say that again. Because this is how we operate underneath all of this. The vision statement. Here is what they're looking for. Here's where we're going. Right? To see God's hope for the world made real through faithful leaders, fruitful communities, fire-filled people. That's you and me. Faithful leaders, fruitful communities, fire-filled people. Now, their mission statement. To an Inspire, equip, and connect communities of faith to cultivate world-changing disciples of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's a big way of saying what we do on mission work, why we exist, is to inspire, to equip, and to connect communities to cultivate making disciples. Of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We need fire for the people to do that. Right? So, who are we as fire for people? What is that push that God is calling us to do? And we've talked about this for a long time, and we are getting closer and closer and closer to defining it. And the, ass- the assignment for the, the church council, and I hope you're doing this, is to ask people, ask all of you, why does St. Mark exist? What's our purpose? Outside of having a place where you can come and be welcomed and worship together, why do we exist? Hmm. Here's what I've been told. Here's what I've learned from all of you in the last 10 months that I've been here. I have heard that your mission is to connect with the community, to be in relationship with each other and with anybody around us. Say yes to God. Yes, meaning yearning, Emerging, serving. The mission statement that I hear from you is we say yes. That is so ingrained in me. I was, I was actually told that when I first came and I started saying, and all God's people said, you first said amen, but you really wanted to say yes. Right? 
to see what we're doing right now is we're grounding ourselves back into who we are and who we are as true children of God. We're back to saying yes. Not yes, but yes. Focus Forward is helping us get ourselves back on our feet and asking some different questions and helping guide us into doing things differently. Right? Are we ready to step out and be fire for people? You can answer that question by the way. Are you ready to be on fire for Christ and be the fire filled people in this community? We're on our way. Now, I want you to know that doesn't mean that we have, have to just delve everything and everything that we do is, is one of those things that we are driven to go deep into Christ all at once. Okay? Some of us are ready for that. Some of us are not. It can be subtle ways that we say to the community, we're here. We are alive. We are awake. We are ready to help you know more about Christ. So that Christ, Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit of God, can step back in and inspire so people. Are you ready? Let's try it again. Are you ready? Yes. So am I. I can't wait to see where God's going to be. Because we are on track to God. And only God can show us that direction. So, my invitation to you this week is to take that Holy Spirit with you. Stick it in your billfold. Stick it where you're going to see it. Put it in your car. Um, it's a temporary one. I'm hoping we can get something that's a little more permanent that you can carry. But I want you to just live with the Holy Spirit every day. I want you to live with that reminder of the Holy Spirit as part of your day. When you wake up with in the morning, I want you to be able to say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. When you're out and about and you're, you're at your Kiwana group, so challenge for my Kiwanian guys, take that Holy Spirit and lay it on the table. See if anybody asks. Take the Holy Spirit with you. And just see what the Holy Spirit is. So this last song is Pass It On. And I don't have the words in front of me, but I believe there is a phrase, I'll shout it from the mountaintop. <laughs> Heather knows where I'm going with this. By the way, I have one of my former confidences. We welcome her. When we come to that passage, we are going to say, I'll shout it from the mountaintop. And then uh, Nicole will pause long enough for us to say, What do we say? <laughs> God's love. Oh, yes. I'll shout it from the mountaintop, God's love. And then we'll finish the song. Got it? Okay. I invite you to stand and join with us on this final song. Pass it on.
again, because I really want to hear that God's love. See, the Holy Spirit came with that rushing wind, a fire out of control, and it comes into our hearts. And it's time for us to start talking, to start sharing in simple ways, in grand ways, that Christ is alive in you. And God's love is here for you. Here's how we live it. And here's how we reach out. That's where we're headed. So I invite you to join us on this journey so that we can be the church that people say, oh, go to St. Mark's. They are fire filled people. They are people who know that we are all children of God, people of war. That's the community I want to be. Because that's the community that centers God's love. Amen.